SX70 cameras uses SX70 film. But in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use 600 film inside your SX70 cameras natively. I know, sit back, enjoy, let's dive in. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. Okay, this one uh, can get confusing, but it's actually pretty simple to understand. I'm gonna break it down for you. Polaroid offers four types of film currently that you can buy. Polaroid Go film for the Polaroid Go camera, exclusively to that. And then there are Polaroid SX-70 film, 600 film, and iType film. iTypes for the new cameras. Uh, there's no battery in the packs because back in the day, cameras didn't have any sort of power. There's no batteries inside of this. Uh, the film cartridge powered your camera. So in modern days, they got rid of that and put the battery in the camera. And then that's what iType film is. The two other packs of film that you can buy are for the older vintage cameras, the SX-70 and the 600. They both have batteries in the film pack and power up the old cameras. But what's the difference between the SX-70 and 600? Well, SX-70 film was the very first film Polaroid ever released. And that was for the SX-70 camera. They named it that. And this thing's amazing, it's awesome. It's an SLR camera. You look through the viewfinder and you see right through the lens, you see what you're framing up. You have manual focus and it has a glass lens. So you're gonna get some pretty sharp pictures. However, the film ISO level is not that sensitive to light. It has an ISO of 160, which you know is great if you are outdoors, bright sunny day, with no shade <laughs> and it will take great pictures. Otherwise you have to stick a flash right on top of the camera to get pictures indoors or in darker situations. Then later in the eighties, Polaroid introduced the second film type. Now it was 600 film. It has an ISO of 640 actually, which I don't understand why they didn't just call it Polaroid 640 film. I don't know, but I digress. These cannot be used inside these cameras, technically. We'll get to that in just a second. This film was really for the point and shoot box cameras or cameras like this, the Impulse AF. So cool. Side note, this doesn't work properly. I'm very bummed. I'm gonna try and get it fixed though because it's the rare blue version. But these cameras aren't SLRs. You're looking through a viewfinder that's offset from the lens. Plastic lens might add, add you, but super fun cameras to use, uh, but a lot cheaper to make and produce. These ones were a lot more of a premium. However, Polaroid did release two SLR cameras that used 600 film, and that was the SLR 680 and 690. The 680 came out in the 1980s, and the 690 came out in the 1990s. But these are very sought after and really, really expensive cameras if you're trying to find one for yourself. But these come with everything you'd want, flash, autofocus, a SLR camera, and it shoots 600 film right inside of it. Why are these so sought after? Why is the fact that shooting 600 film is such a big deal for these cameras? And it comes down to the ISO. It has a much higher sensitivity than SX-70 film. Therefore, you can use it in a lot darker situations without a flash, within reason, of course. But also, 600 film is a lot easier to find. SX film can be a little tough you pretty much have to get it straight from Polaroid or you know maybe a film photography store like B&H but going back to how to use 600 film in these cameras you would think you could just stick it in there and it would work and technically yeah you can't do that but your pictures are gonna be really overexposed putting that film inside of it doesn't change the camera's shutter speed the shutter speed is locked off into thinking that it is SX-70 film with an ISO of 160, meaning the shutter on this is really, really slow. It has to stay open a lot more than 600 does. 600 film is more sensitive, therefore the shutter speed will be very fast. So you can use 600 film in the camera, but you have to throw on what is called an ND filter. It's just one of these. It goes right on top of your film pack, and you just have to remember to put this on every single time you want to use it. But again, it doesn't change the camera's shutter speed. It still thinks it's shooting SX-70 film, so it's gonna be 
a lot slower of a shutter speed. There's a few other options you can do with this, like companies make ND filters that go directly over the lens, um, or you can use the Mint Flash Bar 2. I did a video on this already, but you can actually use this, uh, turn it to the middle power and put it on your camera without an ND filter on the 600 pack, and you can shoot it just fine. I got that tip from Noah from Analog Resurgence. Thanks for checking them out, it's a sweet channel. But none of this changes the fact that the camera thinks that SX70 film is inside the camera. So what are your options out there if you wanna shoot 600 film and get the benefit of having a much faster shutter speed? Well, you can actually have your camera be converted to shoot this film, 600 film, natively, right out of the box, just stick it in, no ND filter required. There's a few companies out there. Now, this isn't a company review. These are just the services I know about. I actually have not used them yet. Um, I do have a converted camera, but I bought this secondhand through somebody that had it done, and their website's gone defunct, unfortunately, um, but I bought this secondhand. However, I do plan to send this one in to be converted. But I left some links in the description if you want to go check them out. But there's a company called Retrospect that offers services and I just noticed they raised their price. Um, it is now $100 to have the camera converted to shoot 600 film. But Brooklyn Film Camera that does do conversions but I do believe you have to be already doing a camera repair. But again, I'll leave helpful information down below for you uh, if you wanna have this service done. I highly recommend doing this there's the only two main reasons i like to have 600 film over sx70 film is the fact that one the film's super easy to find you can walk into walmart best buy targets pretty much carry 600 film just buy as much as you want of it it's great sx70 film no they don't carry that stuff you're not going to find that in stores unless you go to a dedicated photography store and then the other reason is the shutter speed. The shutter speed on here changes to where it, su it shoots faster. Therefore, you can handhold your camera in lower light situations and you don't have to carry a flash. But again, depending on your situation, you still might need a flash. But in my experience, I can shoot in the shade at like sunset and still get some good images without a flash. That's why I like shooting with 600 film in these cameras. And also form factor. It'd be really nice to be able to put this in my pocket, my coat pocket that is, <laughs> versus this guy. Look how big this thing is. Look at that. <laughs> um, this shoots 600, like I said, but this does. It'd be really nice if it did. And then if I wanted a flash, I could just stick this on there and then I have flash and then I can take it apart and put it in my pockets. It's great. I can't recommend converting your cameras more. I think it's great. But just keep in mind, I haven't used these companies that I am referencing and they're definitely not sponsoring this video. These are just resources. Look into and have your you know camera either repaired or worked on and converted. Another benefit of converting your camera is you don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on the SLR 680 or 690. This guy right here. You can find a cheap SX70 like this guy. I, mean, I got lucky and found this for $5, but you can pick up these for about $80 to $100. And then you can send it in to be converted. And if you go the re retrospect route, another hundred bucks. So $150, $200, and you have a converted 600 camera versus six, $700 for one of these. Now you might say there's no autofocus. Well, you could get autofocus and do the same thing. For extra 80 to $100, boom, you have a flash. Now you have an SLR 680 right here, boom. If you uh, do want to get your camera converted, um, at least from retrospect, if they do not uh, change your leather. So if you have a nice leather on there, like I love my blue one, it's great. It won't affect it. Uh, I believe it's just removing the faceplate of the camera and replacing like a like a capacitor of some kind. I'm not for, too familiar on the exact process, but yeah, it doesn't damage your leather in any way. What do you guys think? Do you have a converted camera? Do you plan on getting a converted camera? Are you still confused between the two film types? Let me know in the comments below. Let's chat. And I'm always willing to help answer any questions that you guys have. And if you want to dive even deeper into conversations, check out the Discord. There's a link in the description below, as well as a link to becoming a print club member, as I call it. It's a monthly print club. I send you a photo every single month. It's pretty fun. And yeah, hope you guys had a great new year, and I'll see you in the next video. Now, get out there. Make some art.